a.k.a. Pastor Barry here today. We're in the children's wing of the church, and we're just right outside the doors of all the rooms of the children, and we try to make sure that those young people know that we are still here and we miss them. I can't wait till all the kids start getting back into the church and hearing all the noise and getting those good donuts. So I want to just encourage you today that today we're finishing up a little series we've been doing this week called Learn, Good Lord, Teach Us How to Pray. Now, yesterday we did the National Day of Prayer, and it was a fabulous opportunity for us as a nation to come and pray. But today, how should we pray? Well, I found in Scripture, Luke 18, verses 9 through 14, of an example of how to pray. Now, the, the whole setting of this is that Jesus is telling a parable, which is a story, and he says it kind of like this. There were two men who went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, which means he's a religious leader, and the other was a despised tax collector, and they call him publicans. And what happened is that the religious leader all of a sudden does something. Now, I want you to picture this with me just for a second. Use your imagination. He stood up and began to pray, and he said these words, I thank you, God, that I am not like other people cheaters and sinners and adulterers and i'm certainly not like a tax collector i fast twice a week i give a tenth of my income and it was amazing because he was so proud the tax collector that publican steps up and he stood at a distance and dared not lift up his eyes to the heavens as he prayed instead he beat on his chest and said oh god be merciful to me for i'm a sinner Jesus tells us in this parable that we need to be like the publican. The bottom line is, is that anyone who exalts themselves will not ever be looked at by Christ. When we humble ourselves, he exalts us up to Christ. So then in this whole process, we, we need to be like the man who was humble to pray. We need to pray today like we have no confidence in ourselves, but it's all in God. We need to remember that Jesus died on the cross for us, his blood shed for us, so we could have remission of sin. And today you and I need to understand, we need to be just like this man, a tax collector who says, I am a sinner. Now for you, we need to understand, God does not hear those that are proud, those who want to stand up and be seen yeah, you know, we, we see people like who want to be seen all the time. And God is not going to listen to those. He wants us to be humble in our prayer life. The other thing is we need to be persistently without giving up. And when we pray for something and it doesn't happen real fast, that's not a reason to get up. That's not a reason to quit. That's not a reason to leave your church. That's not a reason to be just friends with somebody. What we're looking for is God's trying to remind us in Luke 18, verses 1 through 8, there's a widow there who gives all that she has. She gives it all that she has, and, and that is the consistency of that person. Now, we need to pray like with a childlike faith. Did you know, that's why we're on the children's wing today, because of this, that over 540 times in Scripture, the word child or children is used. And what it reminds us is that you and I need to be humble enough to come before the Father like a child. And we need to do it in a very caring way. Now, what I've discovered in this, in this today, is that what when I pray, I need to do several things. And so let me give you what I do and what I've learned. First, when I pray, I base my request on God's character. Now, think about it. The character of God is love, joy, and peace, and faithfulness. We need to pray like we know that God will answer that prayer. Maybe you like me. I, I'm expecting when I say a prayer, I'm expecting God to do it because I know that God is faithful and I know that God is great. I know that God is loving and I know he's wonderful. And let me remind you this. There's no problem that God can't handle. You know how I know because scripture, when you tear it down, it says, I'm counting on that. And so the second thing I try to do is when I, I try to confess my sins of the ones that I'm aware of. I'm sure there's things I'm not aware of, but the sins that I'm aware of, I do. 
And I want to show you something. I want to take you back to the Old Testament for a few moments. In Nehemiah, which is one of my favorite books of the Bible, in Nehemiah 1, 6, and 7, Nehemiah speaks this way. I confess that we are sinners and sinned against you, O Lord. Even my family, I have sinned. You have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands and the decrees and the regulations that you gave us. Now, here's what I want you to see. Nehemiah, this was not his fault. Matter of fact, when all this happened to the captivity, Nehemiah wasn't even born. He is speaking for the nation. He is speaking as the nation. He is saying, I'm taking responsibilities because I have a part in this. And he begins to show us this. So what happens, you and I need to confess the sins that we're aware of. And, and as a body of believers, we need to do that. And what it does, it keeps us humble. And then the third thing is I've learned, I claim the promises of God. Now there's over 7,000 of them in scripture. Nehemiah 1.8 says, please remember what you have told your servant Moses. Now Nehemiah is talking to God. Can you imagine me reminding God of something? Nehemiah is not doing it in a bad way. He's doing it with a loving and right heart. And what he's doing is he reminds God of what he's promised. He has said, if you're unfaithful, you'll suffer. If you're obedient, he blesses you. And the good thing is, is that he always comes back and allows us to repent and be restored. And then the last thing is, you need to be very precise what you ask for. A lot of times we have a bad habit of praying things in general, but we need to be very detailed in what we're saying to God. God wants to answer our prayers. He wants to answer the prayers that you have today. And what he wants us to do is be like children and humble ourselves. So today, I want you to start trying to pray a different way. So before we pray today, I, I want to remind you of some folks that we need to be praying for. First, we want to pray as we do every day for the coronavirus. It's worldwide. We have over 4 million people in the world that are infected. We have a little over 1.3 million just in the United States. We have worldwide 272,000 people that have passed away. We have about 77,000 here in the United States. There's about 1.4 million worldwide that are recovering. That's good news. And here in the United States, we have about 218,000. But I want to remind you that testing has gone unbelievable. We have over 8.4 million Americans that have been tested. So be praying for that. Pray for healing. Pray healing for our country. And while you're praying, I ask you to pray for Miss Ann Grantham, Linda Melton, Rita Evans, Benny Ribbon, Tish Bennett. Pray for Ryan Ross's family. His father Lloyd passed away. Stacy Connor, who's supposed to be coming home from New York after being in the middle of that and for David and Jondra O'Keefe. I want you to be praying for them today and pray for your church and pray for your country. Would you pray with me? Father, we come on behalf of the world. Lord, we need a miracle today to take this coronavirus and help us find a vaccine. And Lord, as I've been praying every day that it just would be like a vapor and be gone. And Lord, I pray for the scientists and all those that are working trying to discover a vaccine. I pray, Lord, for our doctors, our hospital staffs, and I pray, Lord, that you would protect them from this. I pray, Lord, for our fire department and, and that are all around us and our police department and our military. Lord, I always pray that you would protect them. And Lord, today we want to pray that you would hear our cry as Nehemiah cried out, for a nation that he had absolutely nothing to do. But Lord, I'm crying out on behalf of our United States that, Lord, you would hear our prayers, you would heal our people. And Lord, today we just thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for this week as we've learned how to pray. And we ask you, Lord, right now to be with Ann Grantham, Linda Melton, Rita Evans, Benny Tish, the family, Lord, of Royal uh, Ross. And Lord, we ask you to be with those families right now. Now, Lord, so this coming weekend, I pray for a great service on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live. Thank you today that we've learned how to pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I want to say thank you. I hope you have a great day. we got some great, exciting things that are going to be happening this coming Sunday. You watch for tomorrow as a commercial comes out. You don't want to miss that. 
Hey, I'm signing off as Jack Sparrow, a.k.a. as Pastor Barry. You have a great rest of the day.